The show focused on delivering beneficial information on everything to do with products and services that can improve your life. This is Experts on Call on AM650. Welcome back to the program as we talk about pets with Phil Moriarty, the owner of the BC Canine Training Center at the foot of number three road, right there by the water in Richmond. And two blocks before you get to Phil's uh, BC Canine Training Center, you will actually drive past the Richmond SPCA branch. And the uh, manager of that branch is Rachel Wiest. And she also is with us on this edition of the program as we talk about pets. Uh, back in her early days working with uh, the BC SPCA head office in the city, Rachel was uh, responsible, uh, was part of a team that organized the, the website for the BCSPCA and all of those frequently asked questions. Rachel says, uh, you you and your, your teammates actually put that whole thing together. Um, I definitely helped with some of the questions. I wouldn't say I put it together, but um, I did answer a lot of these questions over the years. Okay, well, yeah. here's here are a couple for you. Just sort of flashcard random, right. okay? Here's one. My dog bit me. Ugh. Will you take it? Um, Does that happen? I mean, I, I know it's kind of... You'd be surprised. Is that right? I, oh, man. Now, uh, is this a dog that they just got? They haven't trained it yet? The dog snapped at him or nipped him and they just want to get rid of it? It, it can be that. It can be that um, the dog wasn't kept in the best conditions. The dog was introduced to a situation it was unfamiliar with and didn't have another option, it felt. Because, I mean, it's fight or flight for sure. them. Yeah, so yeah. lots of them choose fight, unfortunately, mm -hmm. because they have nowhere else to go. And the people they trust put them in a situation they're not sure of and... It definitely happens more than you hear, I'm sure. Or but the dog doesn't even trust the owner. Yeah, that's it too. I mean, if you haven't built that trust, why would they have it? So right. I'm not going to say we won't take a dog, but it's under special circumstances that we would because people need to understand that if a dog has bit somebody, it's a liability for us too to adopt out that dog. We have right. to be very careful because what if it does it again. What if we adopt it out? We think we've re rehabilitated it. We've done lots of work. It right. hasn't bitten in our care and we've introduced it to situations. And then it goes out and boom, bite somebody else. I mean, people really need Especially to... Especially if there's kids in the family. Oh, exactly, man. exactly. Phil, what do you do when somebody brings a problem animal like that to you? Says, uh, Mr. Moriarty, uh, our dog's a biter. And either this dog gets trained up or we get rid of it. And there's, there's just We've hit the fork in the road. So with your help, maybe we'll be able to keep it. How do you deal with a biter? Depending on the age, you know, th there's a number of things that I would want to know is, uh, is it, uh, you know, what age is it? Mm -hmm. um, obviously the breed, but um, uh, has it been neutered or spayed? Mm -hmm. uh, what, was the, what was the exact circumstance that the bite took place? Who was doing what? Right. And um, uh, how is the dog normally? And um, how is it when you feed it? Um, you know, typically what what the answers are going to, uh, you know, the the normal answer that we get will dissolve into one thing. The, the dog does either doesn't trust the owner, mm -hmm. or the dog is dominant of the owner, and the owner doesn't know how to how to deal with it. Okay. In both circumstances, it's it's more the owner's problem than the dog's problem. Uh, the the problem for the dog, though, is that now it has a history of biting. Right. Yeah. And so it, it carries that history with it. Right. Um, and um, like Rachel says, you know, you know, how do you trust that it won't happen again? Well, we'll probably run it through, uh, you know, if they agree to training, uh, then we're probably going to um, uh, have a much better opportunity to assess the dog in all different ty types of situations because we would expose it to, you know, knowing what the circumstance was that caused it, we will try and recreate those circumstances right. to see w whether it was a person thing or whether it was, you know, any dog would have bitten you under those circumstances. Right, right, okay. Um, and um, uh, then try and find out how to uh, how to get the owners involved in the, in the remedy to it. Mm. And a lot of that is going to be um, hands-on training with them. Rachel, one other, mm -hmm. one other quickly from from the frequently sure. asked questions that you did oh so many years ago, and this goes back to the whole question about spaying and neutering. Yes. Some people believe that if you spay or neuter an animal, its personality will be permanently altered. It'll get fat and lazy, and won't, <laughs> be, won't be much worth much good. So, what do you have to say about that? I don't agree with that at all. Uh, spaying and neutering, it's great not only for the fact that your dog isn't going to be driving other animals crazy. A, a female dog in heat is going to drive other dogs nuts. To say nothing of, of a female cat in yeah, heat. Oh, man, cats oh, in heat drive are Drive a worse. neighborhood crazy. It does, the owners. yowling. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then male dogs, I mean, it, it's great for them to get neutered for a variety of reasons other than, I mean, they can smell the female in heat and they go nuts. Mm. But also, 
how they react around other dogs can be a little bit different too. So if you neuter them and you spay them, it usually just calms them down a little bit sometimes and their personality doesn't change. Mm -hmm. And if you do it at a young age, they bounce back so quickly. Many people have the misconception too that it it hurts them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It, it's just like one of us going in for minor surgery. You go to the dentist, you get it done, it's over, you heal, you're done. Mm -hmm. It's not that big of a deal. Interesting. And yet some people have profound difficulties with this procedure. Yes, they do. Well, some people have profound difficulties with it from a, uh, I'm almost about to say a religious standpoint. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, I've had people come in and say, uh, they, they, they've got a problem with their dog. They want the dog uh, fixed. And I'll say, well, is it uh, neutered or spayed? Uh, well, no, I, I don't want to neuter my dog. Uh, you know, God wouldn't have made it that way if it didn't want it neutered. Oh, interesting. Or if okay. it wanted, and, um, but it's also a dog that has his tail cut off. And I said, did, oh. did God ask for the tail to get cut off too? <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, you know, so, so there's, there's sometimes there's some mental... Uh, stuff that goes on with, uh, w w with people as to why they're not going to, to neuter them. But, uh, you know, if you're not going to use it for breeding and um, you're going to have it as a social animal, y you pretty well should have it done. Yeah. Right. Volunteers, always popular and always in, hi in high demand at the BC SPCA, whether Very. it's your branch in Richmond or any other branch of yep. the province. Right, Rachel? Yeah, we live and die by our volunteers. If we didn't have them, we wouldn't be able to do anything that we do. It's a great program. Uh, young people, high school yep. students get involved. Yep. Uh, people, A lot of future vets we do started, that, actually. started out as volunteers yep. at animal shelters. People that want to become a vet and want to see kind of more about animals, they might change their mind after, but... <laughs> But nothing like a first-hand experience and a great opportunity. Here yeah. we are on the verge of summer, and not everyone's going to get a job. And yeah. volunteers are always, always, where do they go? Just BC uh, SPCA? SPCA.bc.ca. And if they want it for the Richmond branch, just forward slash Richmond, and they can click on our volunteer tab. Okay, so the uh, the province-wide site is SPCA.bc.ca. SPCA there you go. And the BC Canine Training Center at the foot of number three road, right by the water on five acres of land with lots of room for your dog, too, is uh, uh, online at bccanine.com. Phil Moriarty is the owner of the BC Canine Training Center. Good to see you again. Great to be here again, and uh, great to have Rachel with us. Rachel, thanks for yeah, having th me, guys. Thanks for coming back. It's Love wonderful it. to see you again. And that's it for this edition of Experts on Call. See you next time right here on AM650.